data is transforming the way that we understand and respond to the world in which we live. Data scientists have a key role to play in this revolution, creating new ways to capture, interpret, and use the data across a wide range of domains. Founded in 2015, Lancaster's Data Science Institute draws on our historic strengths in operational research, statistics, and computer science, together with researchers from a wide range of application disciplines, to create a truly multidisciplinary data science institute of over 250 members. The quality of the Data Science Institute's research is recognized by a wide range of funders, including business, charities, and research councils from both the UK and Europe. Examples of our strategic initiatives include multi-million pound programs of research on data science for the natural environment, streaming data, and trust, identity, privacy, and security in future pervasive environments. Lancaster also leads on a five million pound prosperity partnership in combination with the UPSRC and BT. In addition to a vibrant research program, Lancaster University's Data Science Institute also seeks to train the next generation of data scientists. We offer an advanced master's program in data science and multiple PhD programs, including through our centers for doctoral training, such as Story. These all provide opportunities for students to engage with world-class academics and our partners. The Institute has a theme concerned with the foundations of data science. Our research develops the technology and the techniques that are needed to underpin the work of the more applied themes. For example, one of our groups works on infrastructure for data science, and that's both physical and virtual infrastructure. Other groups work on models, algorithms, and software for inference, decision support, and optimization. Here at Lancaster University, we're trying to build a sustainable internet to make it bigger, stronger, and faster. Did you know a single YouTube video consumes more power than most countries? ICT now consumes 10% of the world's electricity, and that's going to grow even larger as more nations become more developed. At Lancaster, we're building the systems, train the people, and think of the new future ideas in order to achieve zero emissions of society. Extreme value analysis develops methods that help us to understand and characterize the occurrence and frequency of extreme events including natural hazards such as flooding, high temperatures and large financial losses. At Lancaster, statisticians work closely with physical and environmental scientists to develop meaningful models that incorporate physical and stochastic elements. Predictions from these models can be used to produce outputs such as flood hazard maps. In the health theme of the DSI, we cover a range of areas. We look at gene hunting, disease mapping, and a whole range of different things. We do a lot of work with the NHS. We might do anything from using routinely collected health data and publicly available data like weather to predict the number of admissions coming in, to looking at the general data flow through a hospital alongside a patient. This kind of work will both improve health outcomes for individuals as well as increasing the efficiencies of the hospital overall. In my research, I want to address some of the challenges we face when monitoring sleep in adults and in children. At the moment, we use equipment that's placed on the body and this can be uncomfortable for the patient. I'm working with industry and with doctors to see if data collected from a thermal imaging camera can be just as accurate in measuring breathing and movement during sleep. Using these techniques, we will be able to collect a lot more data and use it to understand health and well-being across development. My research activities lie at the intersection between operational research, artificial intelligence and data science, developing and investigating heuristic methods for solving optimization problems. I've been developing intelligent techniques known as hyperheuristics, which aim to raise the level of generality by offering techniques that are able to solve a variety of optimization problems, mainly in the field of healthcare applications, examples nurse wiring and operating theater scheduling.
The focus of the environment theme is on methodological innovation that helps us to understand and manage the natural environment. Environmental science is going through a period of profound change. We have unprecedented amounts of data from satellites, from citizen science, and also from instruments in the ground. The challenge is then to make sense of this highly complex, highly heterogeneous data at a variety of scales. If we can do that, we can help determine well-informed policies that help, for example, with climate change. Oceans cover 71% of our planet, but observational data is notoriously difficult to collect and to then analyze. One intriguing data set comes from drifters. The data here moves in space and time and has motivated a whole new data science methodology. Our models can be used to help understand oil spills, how plastics in the ocean spread as well as biological species, and how the oceans change with climate change. My research is concerned with the impact of climate change on the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. It's important because the ice melts, and when it melts, the water goes into the sea where it can contribute to sea level rise. It's important to understand the processes which control ice melt and how much melt we can expect in the future. And to do this, we use a combination of in-situ observations, satellite observations and geophysical models. Data science is really important in bringing all these things together. In the society theme, we bring together researchers from across the campus. We work across disciplinary boundaries to tackle issues of real social importance. We embrace a wealth and range of data sources to ask questions about migration, vulnerability, poverty and disadvantage. We also work collectively and collaboratively with industry and business to help them use their data in design and innovation. Data has been collected throughout the years, but what is different now is the scale at which data is produced and our ability to use that data for the public good. In my research, I use data such as cross-national surveys, time diaries, to understand how institutional, political, social and cultural forces configure the intimate fabrics of our everyday social life. I'm interested in family relations, such as parent-child interaction, care provision in the family, work-family balance. On a global scale, my research is also concerned about population mobility and social change, such as the ongoing refugee and migration crisis, and how people move internally between different regions and countries. Data-driven technologies can be a real force for good. They can change society in really positive ways. The challenge is how we accommodate divergent and marginalized perspectives. So I've been looking at two groups in particular, older adults and young children. And looking at both of these groups gives us a new perspective on privacy and security concerns that we can unfold into our technology designs to make technology that's socially responsible and works better for everyone. The UK government has highlighted the importance of data science to the future of this country. And so as a key part of our mission, we see it as training the next generation of data scientists. We've worked with industry in order to create a programme which will give students the exposure to the techniques and technologies they need to tackle the most challenging real world data science problems. In our master's programme over the past five years, we've sent 250 of our students out to a range of host organisations, picking up real world experience. And from then, our graduates have gone on to work as data scientists at organisations such as eBay, Amazon and PwC.